This came in his love. This came in his life. I just, I just re, I actually just reposted a video on TikTok of Joe Rogan talking about how there is nothing like getting into a Porsche and the driving experience is completely incomparable. And he has an 07 GT3 RS, which shares literally nothing with my car except for the fact that it's called a Porsche and it's within a two year span. So I am Joe Rogan. I also have a podcast. <laughs> Also, I'd like it noted, we've been recording for 30 seconds, so I'm just going to snip it all of that up, and that's going to be the start of our podcast. So, welcome to episode 48. <laughs> and he's left. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. I'm keeping that, though. That is staying. That is totally staying. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 48 of the clutch dump we are going to be talking about a racing series that ben hardly watches a racing series that a lot of america watches and a racing series that did something that it rarely does which is race on dirt we are talking about nascar it was bristol baby and that's what we're focusing on this episode we had an entertaining race we had a race that both ben and i watched give or take the entirety of uh we have Watch NASCAR news. Exactly. We have NASCAR news from on track. We have NASCAR news from on track storylines going from Nick just said the same thing twice. You said news uh, from on track and then news from on track. We have news from on the track. We have news from off the track. Editor note. Don't cut uh, that out. The interesting thing is the storylines range from inductees to the NASCAR top 75 Mm -hmm. I'm not laughing because it's okay. A current NASCAR driver being indefinitely suspended because of literally assaulting a woman to near death. Yeah. Uh, and, and more. Oh, and more. We have domestic abuse and <laughs> Tony Stewart on this episode of The Clutch Dump. And dirt ovals, baby. Um, and dirt ovals, baby. Um, we also talk about British Superbike and Formula Drift, but Nick doesn't want to, so I'm going to well, chalk I, it I in. Well, I didn't see like... anything. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Okay, so listen. When I last Scroll looked, down. Scroll when I, down. Ben, when I looked at the dock at 630 when we were supposed to start, it is now well, 730 for context. There was nothing on there. So It's I, totally still 630. It's fine. It is not even remotely close. But yes, we also have British Superbike. We this have is Formula true. Drift to talk about. Yes. And uh, if you follow us on Instagram, you would have seen a post with the Formula Drift bracket. And if you're yep. like, guys, what's the Instagram? It's pretty simple. It's the clutch dump. Look for the true. TCD logo icon in the profile photo. And then subscribe or follow wherever you listen to us, whether it's Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, or otherwise. If this is uh, in audio form, follow us there. Leave a rating or a review for the show. And then if you're watching us, make sure to subscribe on YouTube. Turn on that notification bell and give a little thumbs up to the video. My hand is almost the perfect emoticon for the thumbs up. The shape, the proportions, it's fantastic. It's beautiful. Uh, that being said, Ben, we had a beautiful race weekend in terms of the on-track, on-dirt action at Bristol. No, no, no. And no, guys... No, no. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. We have to ignore NASCAR. I have to give my man his moment. Nick Patty, you did the set. You made the second biggest decision of your life last week, and we haven't talked about it yet, and I feel like we should. Yet, for some reason, you put the text in blue, but go ahead. Nick because Patty, what did you do last Tuesday, Wednesday, one I day married, last week? So it's we. Uh, what I what, what did y'all do? <laughs> I bought a uh, 2006 Porsche Cayman S in speed yellow, and I'm very proud. And there's a, a video at some point coming uh, because, uh, in brief, my family has always had a speed yellow Porsche. And my family's legacy in Porsche Club uh, was centered around speed yellow Porsches. I'm lighting a candle in case you're wondering. Um, and I'm very excited to do a very Petrolicious-esque uh look back in the in the family history photos and then shifting into the next chapter we also have the last de until the turbo cups become moi uh in may so a lot of a lot of porsche stuff happening join porsche club officially many so that things kind of cool uh on um, my own as an adult yes so, uh, um imp important details um it's very yellow it is very nice um yeah it is a six-speed manuel which is crucial i i discovered because sportronic sport is not good 
I discovered the sport button, which I thought only on Caymans opened up the exhaust. The sport button opens up the exhaust. Perfect. <laughs> I took a video and I sent it to Shelby today. I was coming back from the gym, and I was like, I want to hear this thing. So I put it in sport, and I did a third gear to fourth gear pull on 46 when it signposted 45. Let's just say I was doing very close 45. to 45. I yes. was doing, like, you know, within within a tenth of a mile an hour of right, uh, right. 45. Um, and there was a cop coming the other way, and I was just like – and it was on video, so like I'm videoing <laughs> me. You're holding a phone and speeding. <laughs> the I, only well, thing no, worse would have been. I, I was basically doing. You 45. were you were accelerating to the speed limit. I. It, but you were you were third videoing gear. Yeah, in third I, gear, which is totally normal for doing approximately yeah. just below 45 miles no, an hour. But yeah, the car is super cool. Um, I got it for the same price as my Camaro. Um, I'm not gonna make. I I will just let a video about it come to fruition at some point uh, there will be a video in the future that we're gonna do and it's gonna be really sick and at some point may, maybe maybe if nick likes me he'll let me drive it i don't know it's fine. Uh, probably well, i'm just realizing ben what's your riverside probably. profile name right now probably not uh it's my name but backwards Okay, so Bristol, NASCAR. <laughs> uh, in case you didn't know, NASCAR was in Bristol this weekend. Um, I'm going to go through some of the storylines outside of the race. I'll let Ben go ahead and give us kind of a run-through of the race, and then we can go the results together. Woot. So, um, Cody Ware, his, his family owns a NASCAR team. His family also right. owns an IndyCar team. B big he, deal. He, Big he race is only in NASCAR because his family owns the team. He has the world at his feet. He is, as you could say, for our Formula One fans, a Lance Stroll of sorts for NASCAR. Well, Lance Stroll is actually more successful, too, so it's worse for Cody Unfortunate. Ware. Unfortunate. So Cody Ware decided on Monday to lay his hands on a woman uh, and not, like, hold her hand, put right, his right. arm around her and say, hey, honey, I hope you're, I hope you're doing well to his girlfriend or something. He decided to beat the living tar out of a woman. Mm. Um, and so he has been charged with assault yep. and assault by strangulation, inflicting serious bodily injury, which, depending on state laws, all that stuff, that, that will give him jail time if he Not, can't flee out of I it. I certainly hope so. I, that would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, we also had the debut of the Choose Drone this race. So if you're not too familiar with NASCAR, uh, on restarts, there's an option to choose whether or not you're going to be in the right or left starting lane for the restart. Um, and so because normally that's painted onto the track, it's a stripe or an arrow or a mark. Uh, and Bristol being covered in dirt, it wasn't possible to have that. Right. So it was a drone that had a, a camera on the front of it looking towards the field. And it had an LED little square on it to indicate the choose. Um, so that was new tech. It worked fine, I guess. I mean, the NASCAR camera quality evolving. wasn't crazy. Yeah, exactly. The camera quality wasn't too clear on it, but whatever. It was cool, I guess. It, cool angle to see who's choosing which side. Tony Stewart, prior to the race, was inducted as one of the top 75 NASCAR drivers of all time. Um, and this, obviously, I mean, I'm wearing the hat, but for the 75th anniversary of NASCAR, they're going back and putting together, compiling a list of the top 75 NASCAR drivers to ever do it. Obviously, we, we're talking about Dale Earnhardt, Richard Petty, all the right. big names. The big names. Um, so Tony, Tony Stewart was inducted in that list. And then today it was announced that Casey Kane is being added to that list as Fantastic. well. Fantastic. Bobby Labonte will be broadcasting the next race alongside Tony Stewart and the regular crew. The next bit is All-Star Race news, which if you've listened to our previous episodes, you will know that the All-Star Race is being held at North Wilkesboro Speedway, which if you're like, what the hell is that? North Wilkesboro was um, one of the original short tracks that's, that had been raced on all the way up through the 80s. And I want to say like 92 or 93 um, before it was closed down. Uh, it's been revamped, uh, reinvigorated. We've talked about it. It's coming back onto the calendar. It's going to host the All-Star Race this year. Well, so what's been announced now is the format of the All-Star Race. So qualifying will be based off the pit crew challenge. So it will be based on the team's order in, qu in quickest pit time. So for the Formula One listeners, huh. 
there's always the fastest pit stop of the race or the fastest pit stop of the season. Right. So instead of doing a silly sprint race, it actually relies on the team now rather than the drivers. That's actually pretty cool. I think it's a great idea. Because, That's really cool. Because NASCAR does, in particular races, but specifically the All-Star race, will give out awards for the best team and the best pit crew. Yeah. So that's cool. As you should. Um, it's a four-tire pit stop, no fuel. Okay. So just basically how quick can you get the car up, get the four tires on? These results determine the starting lineups for the All-Star Heat races and the All-Star Open. The All-Star Heat races, there are 60 laps each, resulting, or the results of Heat 1, Race 1, uh, hold on, I'm sorry, that's very small text. Results of Heat Race 1 set the All-Star Race inside row. Results of Heat Race 2 set All-Star Race Outside row. That's also a sick way to order a grid. NASCAR cool. getting really creative with that. Well done, NASCAR. Um, That's the way All-Star more interesting than just tacking a sprint, sprint race races. onto yeah. every weekend. I'm looking All-Star at you, MotoGP. All-Star Open, a uh, hundred laps. It'll have a competition break on or around lap forty. Not a fan of that, but it's NASCAR. Yeah. You can't listen. There's improvements. I'm not going to complain, but come on, let's do better. We can't win the, them all. The top two finishers transfer to All-Star Race, and then the fan vote winner transfers to the All-Star Race. I, if I remember this correctly, because for a lot of people, they're like, what the hell is he talking about? So the All-Star Race grid, um, you're guaranteed entry if you win a race, and then the rest of the spots of the All-Star Race grid are determined based off these heat races and the open. So, uh, I believe if you win a heat race, you're guaranteed. And then, basically, the, the I don't know, I don't know for sure, but hypothetically, let's say the grid is 20 cars for the All Star race, the whole race, and 10 have been decided going into this weekend. But let's say another two get decided by the heat races. The next eight will be determined by the All Star Open. So the All Star race field. Oh, God, it's right here. All-Star Race Field, 2022 and 2023 NASCAR Cup Series points race winners. Past All-Star Race winners and NASCAR Cup Series champions. They will be added. uh, They will be competing against the All-Star Open Top Finishers, which is what we were just talking about, the 100 laps, and the NASCAR Fan Vote winner. (laughs) Um, The All-Star Race format is 200 laps. Every lap counts, so no, oh, we're under yellow, or we're going to red flag, or there's going to be a lap that doesn't count somehow. Right. So they'll start on sticker tires, three additional sets in the pit box. Overtime rules in effect, competition break on or around lap 100, so halfway. After the competition break, only one additional set of sticker tires may be used. (laughs) So basically, they're trying to control for having lit unlimited tires and running as hard as right. you can as fast as possible. Right. Just pit stopping every, you know, and the reward is $1 million for the race winner. Cool. Okay. Back to my talking points, my bullet points. This last weekend, Kyle Bush or rowdy as he's known, made his 650th NASCAR cup series start over the weekend. To my knowledge, he's the longest competing I checked. This is correct. Okay. He is. Perfect. Um, After Richmond, we have more penalties. And if you're like, after Richmond, aren't they at Bristol? Yes. Richmond was last weekend. There are more penalties against the number 24 and number 48 Hendrick Motorsports car. Obviously, the 24 of Byron and the 48 of Bowman. Uh, This quote is from the Washington Post. Quote. NASCAR took both the number 48 and number 24 cars to its R&D center following the race at Richmond and found illegal modifications in the greenhouse or center area of the car. NASCAR docked the team's 60 points and five playoff points apiece last Thursday. Last but not least, for the uh, off-track talking points, the race was celebrated and commemorating the 30-year anniversary of the passing of Alan Kulwicki, who, uh, for those of you that don't know, was a very famous driver um, in the 80s. He was a contemporary of Dale Sr. and Richard Petty and, for a time, Kyle Petty and the whole host of 80s drivers. 
Um, he died in a plane crash on his way to Bristol uh, to compete 30 years ago this weekend. And he drove uh, a Hooters-sponsored car in white with orange. Uh, and Josh Berry was driving the Hooters car for Hendrick, replacing Chase Elliott this weekend. I don't know if the color scheme was intentional uh, this way because they've run it in black before. But it is just kind of touching that it was run right. in black 30 years after him having passed driving another Hooters car. Looking forward, we have the Martinsville 400 next weekend. Another damn short track, but it's okay. <laughs> As Ben is about to go through, um, it was it, this this short track did not disappoint. It did not. Um and as you know, if you are a follower of the Clutch Dump, you will note that... Um, ben doesn't watch NASCAR. I, I don't watch NASCAR. It's not really... I used to watch it a lot uh, back when Junior raced, and once he left, I kind of stopped watching um, just because I grew up as a Junior fan. So I kind of fell out of the sport. That's how it happens. But there was dirt racing. Who doesn't like dirt ovals in NASCAR? Um, I'm a big fan of cars going really fast sideways, so I give it a watch. Um... The interesting thing about this is, you know, they always talk about the track evolving over a race when we talk about F1 this or GT or anything crazy. else. Crazy. No track evolves more than a dirt track. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've actually watched a dirt oval track race, like a short oval uh, track race in person, and it's one of the nuttiest things ever. Uh, but I watched it with sprint cars, the things that are like two feet tall and like eight feet wide or whatever, or uh, like two feet long and eight feet tall or whatever. Yeah. Um, and those things are nuts, but the race is way shorter. It's all of, like, 20 laps, not 250. Um, so I do have some lap-by-lap -lap commentary, and then we will go through the results. Um, so lap 12, William Byron, the number 24 Chevy, hits the rear of Joey Logano, the 22, um, who hits the rear of Bubba Wallace, the number 23. So 24 hit 22, hit 23. Just thought that was kind of funny. Um Lap 38, the number 51 of Matt Crafton is into the wall at turn four. So incident nearly takes out Joey Logano, who had that accident on lap 12. For those of you who are wondering who Matt Crafton is, he was taking the place of Cody Ware in that number 51 say, car. And um, I had never heard of Matt Crafton. I actually, despite the fact that I don't watch, I do kind of loosely keep up with NASCAR, and I had never heard the name Matt Crafton. And when watching the race, they were like, oh, because I hadn't heard about the Cody Ware drama or whatever right and well and the... i only think the story came out today because when i well, was checking to make sure like i had everything up to date it literally was the... if you looked up nascar news it was like the first entire page of google was cody Ware. well the um i don't think they announced it before the race but they did announce that matt crafton took his place the commentator was very professional and it was like matt crafton you know taking a seat in the number 51 car in in place for cody Ware, who was out dealing with a personal issue and i was like oh i'm the personal issue? Family drama. He personal strangles issue. the life out of women. Right. Anger issues is what they Yeah, it's say. just kind of a, you know, it's not a, a, a felony or anything. Right. Um, so I don't know if this is Matt Crafton's first NASCAR race. If it is, welcome to NASCAR. Oh, yeah, what a heck know. of a way to start. Um, so that was lap 38. Lap 50, <laughs> the number six. How'd you get uh, your start in the NASCAR Cup Series? <laughs> <laughs> kind this of a driver story. couldn't keep his hands uh, off women. I <laughs> so, um, but hey, dirt, like. If you're going to start, start on the dirt oval. That's really start sick. Start Bristol dirt, baby. Let's right. go. Uh, moving on to lap 50, the number six of Brad Kozlowski spins. Solo incident once again. And lap 78, which is the end of stage one, Denny Hamlin and Josh Berry make contact in turn four. No serious yep. damage to either car. This was the biggest wreck of the whole race. It was like a six-car pileup, but Denny, uh, d but Hamlin and Barry were the two cars that caused it. The amount, it was their contact. The amount, um, and I know we're getting to it, but the amount of no, 360s where they would just keep the throttle in it, and they'd do a pirouette. And this race, Tony Stewart mentioned it. Clint Boyer mentioned it. They did not throw greens, or greens, yellows. <laughs> they stayed green much more than they normally Way do. Way more. Uh, and and if, of any track. Everyone loved it. Right, everyone of, loved it. Any track you think where they'd be throwing yellows, it's the one where the cars are sideways for 90% of the lap. But there really wasn't that many. I mean, really all the commentary that I made notes on were yellow flag incidents or incidents that could have been yellow flagged. And, I mean, it's all of, like, nine or ten things. Um, yeah. 
So, and then Kyle Larson of the number five Chevrolet wins stage one. Moving on to lap 81, the number 13 of Jonathan Davenport spins in turn four. Also never heard of him. Another solo incident. It was his first race. He is from, uh, he has a dirt track background. He was complaining that this isn't proper dirt track because it's long distance. And to, the suspension setup is very different. These are just NASCARs that they set up soft is all it is. Yeah. I, I went back and watched a video. Johnny so like boy. Act, Johnny act, boy. actual dirt it's track dudes are like. It's not an actual dirt track, but you're also not an actual cup series driver. So let, let's let not split hairs. All well, right. That's pretty much what it was. And he was like, honestly, I'm not doing this one simply because it's a dirt track. It's just when they asked me to get in the car. Sure. If they want, he's like, I'd be happy to do a paved oval. That sounds awesome. He's like, I right. really enjoyed it. But from a dirt track background, you have to take most of what you know and throw it away because it doesn't apply to these cars because they drive right. so much differently. Because if you ever watch like actual sprint car dirt track racing, they'll pull both front tires off the ground coming out of turns because they're super short and crazy gripped up. And, you know, so this is very different for dirt track drivers. Lap number 88, Michael McDowell does the 360 in turn two and keeps going. So this is the 360 that everyone was really talking about. And then it just kept was, happening. Was Michael <laughs> McDowell did a 360 all in his lonesome, just, you know, ha- all hanging All his it, lonesome in the hang, middle of the field. In the middle of a field, does a 360. Nobody hits him. Well done to everyone, by the way. Yeah. You know, that totally could have been someone who goes, oops, bump, and then just... You know, spun him into a wall. Oh, I couldn't avoid it because, you know, couldn't we're on avoid dirt. Because we're on dirt. Nope, everyone avoided him, moved out of the way. It was great. Does a 360, gets back into it. Fantastic driving. Lap 103, the number 41 Ford of Ryan Priest spins in turn two after getting squeezed three wide. This, uh, we've mentioned two names already in this race recap that basically are going to define the kind of on-track talking points that we have. So that's called foreshadowing foreshadowing and lap 126 once again the number six of brad kislowski spins all on his lonesome and tyler reddick of the number 45 toyota is your stage two winner and tyler reddick was so for those of y'all again that didn't watch tyler reddick austin dillon and um chase briscoe and christopher bell looked like the guys to beat they, they were, were on top of it on it and I was almost sitting there wanting Austin Dillon to win because I hate him. And I don't know. I was just like, man, I would love to see him like not be able to win anything. And then it's like, ah, he's not even a dirt track driver, but he somehow right. wins on the dirt. And yeah, but <laughs> um, moving on to lap 156, the number five of Kyle Larson spins in turn four. I think that was also a solo this incident. This made me so, I really do not understand people's fascination with Kyle Larson so this entire race, I was just relishing. I was like, <laughs> he spun again, or <laughs> there's more you contact. You know, I, I was, oh, I was never, I was never a Larson fan when I did watch, but I've, I've never been anti Larson. I just, I, I never understood it either. This race, I was anti Larson. Uh, so lap one seventy four, there was a crash at turn one. The number forty one of Ryan Priest was playing essentially ping pong with the number five Chevrolet of Kyle Larson. Yep. And the wall, this, uh, this made Larson retire from the race. Lap 235, the number eight Chevrolet of Kyle Busch spins at turn four coming into pit road. Which, that one upset me because I wanted Kyle Busch to win this race. So, I don't actually know if he was intentionally coming into the pits. I, I can't don't think remember. he was. I don't think, I don't he, think he was. was. He just spun, and it was actually safer to go into the pits instead of try to cut yep. back up the bank. Um, either way, well done for uh, Kyle Busch. Lap 248, Austin Dillon, the number three car, takes third place from Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the number 47 car. And then the last lap, caution on the back straight. I didn't actually see who was in that accident, yeah, I but don't there, was, there was a, there was a two-car wreck, and there were stopped cars. Uh, Ross on, Chastain was one of them. That's, that's what it was. Um, but there were stopped cars on the line, in the groove, so they did have to throw a caution there. And, and that under yellow. And it finished under yellow, yellow, which sadly we don't like to see, but it was really good racing. And um, Christopher Bell of the number 20 Toyota did win Bristol Dirt, which is really cool because of the three times they've run Bristol Dirt, or the last two times they've run Bristol Dirt, Christopher Bell is the first one with a dirt track background to actually win the race. Um, sadly for Tyler Reddick, he was looking very strong in closing Just on Christopher out. Bell. And honestly, if there was one more lap or maybe even not that caution, he would have gone for a last lap lunge on Christopher Bell. Yeah, Mr. he was closing on him. 
like, so from lap, like, four laps left, I was like, ah, he's too far off. Three laps left, he still he seems far off. He was real close on that and second that to last second, lap. Yeah, the second to last lap, he, he was about a half car length off. It was easily close enough to throw it up the inside to a slide job on Christopher Bell if he would have had the last lap to do it. But yep, yep, that's yep. not how the cookie crumbled. Uh, Mr. Patty, do you want to run through um, some results sure. real quick? I'll let you I take will... that as far as you want because there are 31. Well, I'll do the top 10 and I'll do some honorable mentions or people to know outside of the top 10. So starting in 10th, honestly, a surprisingly good result for Ty Gibbs and the number 54 Toyota from Joe Gibbs Racing. Kevin Harvick, the closer, in ninth with his number four Ford. Todd Gilliland in the 38 Mustang in eighth. Martin Truex Jr. in seventh in the 19 Toyota. Justin Haley, a really good result for him. Really good result. 31 Colleg Racing Chevrolet in sixth. Chase Briscoe, at a point, was the favorite for the win. Looking really strong. He unfortunately got stuck in the uh, the cushion up on the top of the track and uh, lost some places and just didn't really recover. So he was in fifth in his uh, Mahindra number 14 Ford. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., woot, uh, reigning woot. Daytona 500 champion, in fourth in the number 47 Chevrolet from JTG Dougherty. As Ben noted, he was just overtaken at the very end by Austin Dillon in the number three RCR Chevrolet. Tyler Reddick in second in the 45 Toyota from 2311 Racing and Christopher Bell from Joe Gibbs Racing uh, in first. Also, uh, Christopher Bell is the wingest Joe Gibbs Racing driver, I believe they said, in the last two or three years. And uh, really? JGR's last seven wins, he's won the last five. Cool. Um, so, I did not know that. Yeah, that was big. A few honorable mentions. Ross Chastain in 28 had a pretty miserable race. Really did. Um, pretty miserable race. Denny Hamlin had a pretty miserable race. He was down in 22nd. Um, Brad Keselowski, as Ben noted, just kind of spinning fairly consistently uh, by himself. That was unfortunate. And then the DNFs were Kyle Busch, Noah Gregson, Matt Crafton, Kyle Larson, Jonathan Davenport, and Joey Logano. Ben, Logano won wanna... last year, correct? Yes, he did win last year. And he won the truck race on Friday? Yes, he did. Yeah. So, um, Real quick, before we move on from NASCAR, two yes. things. Number one, I feel like we should explain the term cushion for our non-dirt track loving fans. So cushion is basically... Assuming that we are dirt track loving fans. Well, I, I did look into this because I wanted to make sure yeah. I was correct. I did my homework before the episode. I, I know, don't do homework. Good podcaster. Um, I'm just a bad student. But so, <laughs> so the cushion is basically they run an inside line over the course of 250 laps. You'll see the track. Everyone starts running wider and wider. And towards the end of the race, they're basically sliding with the rear. What would be bumper dragging on the walls for the entirety of the turns. So the cushion is basically a wall of dirt that builds up as they run around. They smooth out the track and you can see through the progression of, of the race because the dirt isn't packed down obviously because then it's just like running on slick right. pavement so it's the dirt is loose and as they run around you can see it actually start to pack down and you'll see it actually turn gray or black from the rubber wearing off the tires because even though they're not running on pavement the tires do wear down obviously so you'll see the um the track start to pack down and they'll slowly start moving up and up and up the track as the race progresses. So that's what cushion is. And it's something you want to run just inside of the cushion. Basically, when you're sliding a corner, you want your outside rear tire to be on the cushion. And it can be a problem, like Nick mentioned, uh, one of the drivers had, of running over the cushion. It can slow you down because, obviously, suddenly you'll be in a tall, loose surface. Um, another thing, I feel like this race would be right up tra Travis Pastrana's alley. Yeah, well, and so he said, and correct me if I'm wrong, he said the Daytona 500 was a one-time thing. He did say NASCAR. the 500, but not NASCAR. And I feel right. like if anyone, the dude is known for sliding cars around dirt and dirt bikes. Well, now dirt remember, NAS, dirt, dirt NASCAR. One out of the last three was won by a dirt racer. So that doesn't necessarily mean. This is true. But, but, but still. also, how many Daytona 500s have been qualified for by someone who's never driven a Next gen car. So exactly. anything can happen in NASCAR. Again, anything can happen. If they can just get some of the technical and, and logistical things right, it's oh. some of the most entertaining racing. Also, I'm just going to throw this out into the universe. Say, hypothetically, obviously, 
Um, there was a very talented Australian race car driver who raced for a team that had ties to a Ford and I don't know likes who to that race for NASCAR and really likes NASCAR. I think Can't that'd be think cool. Of who that would be if we could get said um, person who maybe um, spirit animal is an angry small woodland creature. Uh, maybe right. that person could come and do um, Bristol Dirt. So um, maybe Ford, I would Ford, hope, but... Ford Red Bull. Can we have Daniel Ricardo do Bristol Dirt, please? Really, that's all it is. Yeah, just in, in um, short. In short, can Daniel Ricardo do Bristol well, Dirt? Well, you know what I was thinking, and I was thinking this watching the race, but the fact that Kimi hasn't tried to do the dirt race either with his rally experience. I mean, I know Coda so is that's Coda, one and thing, he had which, his last win there, but... Well, his his Kimi done... I thought he's only done road course NASCAR stuff. Well, he has, but I'm saying considering that he had done right, considering he's done rally, rally racing, I don't know right. why he wouldn't also open it up to the Bristol race. Right. So I, I think that'd be super cool. Um, unless, unless I mean, we, hell, get can into, we get Sebastian Loeb. Can we get Loeb? And that's just what I was thinking. OJ um, or yeah, right. Because for those of you that don't know, Kimi Räikkönen actually had one of Sebastian Loeb's old championship winning cars as his rally car, and he did roll it into a tree. Yep, um, that's the iconic pe- photo. Th- that's that's the iconic photo. That's the um, one. Nick Patty, any more comments about this week's Bristol Dirt? No, uh, it was just a really good race, and I really enjoyed sitting down and watching it. So It was a fantastic race, and we probably won't be watching the Martinsville 400, as we'll get to in a bit. I will um, be. You will Speak be, Nick. for yourself. You'll be, you'll be at a racetrack. I will be watching it at home. <sighs> So what? Here's, here's no meaning like I'm going to MotoGP, but I'm not going to lie. There was part of me that was like, I'm so long beach. I WC am upset about, I, I am upset about uh, all of those. NASCAR Martinsville. I was like, it's just MotoGP. I but just, here's inti- what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my phone on low battery mode and I'm going to have a portable charger and I'm just going to have mm-hmm. whatever's on. I'm going to have it playing at the track. I'd also like it noted, if you haven't looked at the schedule for MotoGP already, it's a 16-lap race, and it's at 3 p.m., so it'll be over pretty quick. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like, you'll, you'll be home at, like, 6 p.m. at the latest. Right. That's that's so overlooking the two hours of driving either way, but yeah. Well, no, because it's, like, a 16-lap race. It'll be done before Speaking four, of motorcycles, then... we have British Superbike to talk about. of motorcycles, we have the opening rounds of the British Superbike Championship. Now, BSB isn't a championship that I normally follow. I kind of keep an eye on it, but I haven't followed it too closely. However, there are three riders that I'm extremely interested in. We'll get to those in a bit. If you're unfamiliar with how British Superbike works over the weekend, there's a sprint race on Saturday and then two races on Sunday. So there's lots of track action. They do qualifying the same way as MotoGP. It's all based on free practice two times. Um, they split the grid in half into Q1 and Q2. The fastest six riders from Q1 move on to Q2. Your Q2 results are Tommy Bridewell on the number 46 Beer Monster Ducati. I love it. That is a fantastic team name. They race... Yeah. For Beer Monster Ducati. It's yes, much better B- than Gas Gas. B-E-E-R Monster Ducati, which is super sick. So well done, Tommy Bridewell, followed by Kyle Ride on the number 77. Yamaha, followed by Josh Brooks, followed by Jason O'Halloran. Glenn Irwin, qualified P5 on the number two Beer Monster Ducati. Um, Glenn Irwin is one of the riders I'm following this season. He is currently and still the fastest newcomer ever at the Isle of Man. TT, Ooh. followed by Denny Buchan in P6 on the number 83 BMW. Jack Kennedy, P7. Denny Kent, P8. He was the highest qualifying Honda for level Kent racing. Christian Idon uh, on the number 21 bike in P9. Leon Haslam in P10 on the number 91 BMW. Peter Hickman, P11. Uh, this is the man I'm really following. Peter Hickman is currently the fastest man around the Isle of Man TT. He has won nine times, and he currently holds the lap record at an average speed of it's like 135.6 miles slow, an hour. I'm a little slow, but I have a question. Yes. Beer Monster Ducati is in beer and then Monster Energy or Beer Monster? Like he's a beer fiend. Like he's a I- beer behemoth. I don't know. I will take a slight sidetrack. Because I would love, Google I this. really hope it's like a, a, a beer monster, like a, a beer behemoth, a beer fiend. Uh, 
Uh, let's so while see that's here. looking, no, 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 hold up, I got it right here. Um, so Beer Monster, which is stuck together as one word. Uh, so Beer Monster is actually a company is the new title sponsor for the Paul Bird Motorsports Ducati British Superbike team. Um, they have huge discounts on beer, lager, cider. I'm, I'm on their website now. Yeah, so Beer Monster is a Whoa. beer distributor. Um, I'd like it noted, if if merch exists, I will be ordering a Beer Monster Ducati hat or shirt. Yeah, I think we need to look above. into that for the Clutch. Can, can the Clutch Zone become an official sponsor of Beer Monster Racing on the motorcycle? Hey, How much do we have to beer, pay? Beer Monster, hit us up. We'd love a sponsorship. Um, no, 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 no. So, I'm saying we sponsor the team. Oh, we sponsor the bike. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, we pay them we, so that we our give sticker up, can be we, on the bike. No, no, no. We we want money from them. We want... Okay. Um, so, Peter Hickman, P11. I just want our name to be next to Beer Monster on a motorcycle. <laughs> Beer, Monster. <laughs> Beer Monster, the clutch dump. Um, Make sure you dump the clutch as you're yeah, drinking. Yeah. I, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. joke. Don't that's... drink and drive. <laughs> <laughs> My lawyer has informed me that that is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> For legal reasons, this is a satire show. Right, right. <laughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut all Refer of that out. Refer back to the whole Cody Ware situation. <laughs> this is all satire. This is None all this is serious. Like I was saying in qualifying, Peter Ooh. Hickman in P11 for BMW. He's a nine-time Isle of Man TT winner. Ryan Vickers, P12. Lee Jackson, P13. Andrew Irwin, brother of Glenn Irwin, P14. Charles Nesbitt, P15. Josh Owens, P16. Dean Harrison, the other writer I'm following on the number five, Kawasaki. He's a three-time Isle of Man TT winner. And then the person with the best name in British Superbike qualifying, P18. Storm Stacy on the number 79 Kawasaki. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, well, it's a pretty good name for a motorcycle racer, at least. It's not as good as Stingray Rob, but it's I, really Well, that's good. what I was going to say. Stingray Rob, I think. Stingray Rob currently the holds the trophy. Yeah. Um, so for race one at Silverstone, by the way, they were at Silverstone. Haven't mentioned that yet. That's awesome. <laughs> so they did their first race at Silverstone. So the sprint race, your winner was Kyle Ride on that number 77 Yamaha, followed by Tommy Bridewell on the number 46 Beer Monster Ducati, followed by Josh Brooks in the number 25 BMW, followed by jo Jason O'Halloran on the number 22 Yamaha Followed by Glenn Irwin, who came P5 on the number two Beer Monster Ducati. Love it. Race number two. These names are going to sound very similar because it's the same guys. Josh Brooks took P1. Tommy Bradwell, P2. Glenn Irwin, P3. Kyle Ride, P4. And Jason O'Halloran, P5. Something to note about Superbike races is the bikes are much very closely matched because it's right. all stock-based motorcycles. So it sadly is one of those things where kind of your qualifying order is usually pretty similar to your finishing order. Um, so that's why you'll see over the three races, it's kind of just the top well, five and qualifying. Well, more than that, but the, mixed the riders up. that excel right. will continue to excel the, right. roughly the same as opposed to having a bike that is somehow less competitive, even though you're a better rider. Right, so, like doesn't have good quality pace, but has good race pace. Right, right. Which, it's just you're, right. you're either fast um, or you're not. Right, especially in the sprint race because it's so short, they're almost running at quality pace. Well, and I will never forget that in, I think it was World Superbike, like Jonathan Ray, like I don't remember watching a World Superbike race for a period of like seven years where it wasn't Jonathan Ray on the godforsaken Monster Energy Kawasaki, where mm -hmm. it was like he was just the best at it. And no matter yep. if there was a faster bike, he was just the best. So it upsets me so much every time I go to a motorcycle thing, like whether it's a meet or anything, there's always oh, no, dudes on sure Kawasaki. Well, there's always dudes on Kawasaki Ninjas that have Monster Energy stickers, and I'm like, you don't even know why that's on there. You just know that because it's the Kawasaki well, thing but, to but do. It's like it's like some of the guys, some, not some, some of the guys okay. that have the Repsol liveried Honda bikes, where it's like, yeah, that's true. I, I bet okay, most but, people, if I went you, up I to mean, them and just, I was like, who's Mark Marquez, hot. they'd be like, eh, yeah, no, so. no, no. But see, it, it, that, it does. Look. See, you just saying that like rubs me the wrong way. The real right. deep cut would be like. Who's not just Nikki Hayden, but Danny Pedrosa? Or, right. oh, is that the Valentino Rossi Honda? So they can be like, what? He right. Honda. Think, and then right. you can be like, actually, right. he did. Right. So, and then you got to like really throw him off and, and be like, well, Rossi was my favorite when he was on a Ducati. And then they're just completely confused. <laughs> and then um, you see their head like a fembot right. proceed to implode. Exactly. Um, so race three at Glenn Irwin, I was very stoked to see him win that one for the number two beer Good monster job, Ducati. Glenn. 
Um, well, I just wanted to say Beer Monster Ducati again. In P2, Josh Brooks, Tommy Bridewell, P3, gonna, Jason O'Halloran, P4. And then Danny Kent, who is the one rider who breached into the top five that did not qualify within the top five. Good job, number, Danny. On the number 52 level Kent Racing Honda. So well done to Danny Kent. The next race is at Alton Park on the 30th. And a last bit of motorcycle news that I am going to squeeze into here is the person with the best name in motorcycle racing, Toprak Razgat Leoglu, is currently, today and tomorrow, testing on a MotoGP bike. Have you seen the livery for the Beer Monster bike? Yeah, it looks sick. Yeah, it's like Ducati, and then it just says Beer Monster. Yeah, I it's, love it's, it. it's red and white, and just in big letters on the side says Beer Monster. There will be a big for, picture for here, viewers, but it looks yeah. sick. So, ooh, I should tell Jacob that he should put a Beer Monster livery on his Street Fighter. And, and then, oh. before he rides it, he should shotgun a tall boy. Again, my lawyer also, is advising also me to <laughs> Oh my gosh! <sighs> well, you want to finish up with some Formula Drift? It's it's fine. I labeled this. I always label this as not child friendly, and it's all. all the, I label us as the bad I people. I haven't said a bad um, word <laughs> because it's all a joke. I um, just advised horrible and mildly illegal <laughs> behavior. Uh, but yes, real real quick, uh, Razgat Leoglu is doing a MotoGP test today and tomorrow. It's the second one. He did his first one back in June, but it got rained out, so he didn't test further. He did say that he wants to shift his career more towards MotoGP. He is only 26 years old, so he can absolutely still get into GP. And uh, I don't know, may maybe we see Top Rack on a, uh, on a GP bike in the near future. I am going to hop into Formula Drift real quick because... Do it. It is one of my favorite sports to follow. And as interesting as it is to watch, it is very hard to follow the whole thing because it's a bracket system. There's qualifying, then they go into top 32. Go check out our Instagram. It shows the bracket. But it means that it takes forever. Like, the racing, the event started at noon. Um, right. What was it? Noon on Saturday, and it ended at, like, 7 p.m. Like, it, it takes forever because... It's two dudes go do a run, and then they swap positions and do another run. Well, and it's then almost they like it takes so long that Ben was posting about it while I was catching Z's. Uh, yes. Um, you don't know so, what I'm talking about unless you follow us on Instagram at the Clutch. Th thank Fameless you, Nick, plug. for going to bed. Um, so some things I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to go through the whole grid and the breakdown of everything. You can go to the Formula Drift YouTube channel and watch it all there. Um, that would take me oh, no, hours. No, no, no. Stay right here. Just go watch other stay, videos. Stay right here. Just yeah, right here. Um, just go stuff. watch more of our stuff. If you're um, driving, make sure to put some on the deck. Yeah. <laughs> Also a joke. Um, <laughs> so, um, but interesting things. James Dean is back. That is D E A N. -E. I thought he was dead. There's oh. an E at the end. Um, so this James Dean is like a six foot five um, Irishman, and he so, is. So a, it would be harder to wrap around a, a pole. Yes, but. Um, he is the 2017, 18, and 19 Formula Drift champion. He, he left for a couple of years, and he is now back driving for RTR, um, who runs the Mustangs. That company is owned by Vaughn Gittin you gotta, Jr. You gotta, you gotta fix your typing because I was just reading through to kind of see what's coming, and I see James Dean finish, you know, a particular place, and then I see Adam LZ finish dead, and then I was like, wait, James, D what, like? <laughs> Like Sorry, died? if you don't follow the sport, that, that doesn't make died sense. Uh, but, drift? but um, it was announced a couple weeks ago that James Dean is back. He's racing for RTR. Something interesting though is that they converted his or they built his car as right hand drive because that's what he's used to. It's a sequential. Oh, because he's they a run, Brit, mate. Right. And they at Irishmen would get offended at that. Um, they but they run. They they run nitrous injected 460 cubic inch NASCAR motors, essentially, and they make 1300 Love horsepower, it. and they're Love awesome. It. And they sing at like 8500 RPM. Ooh. Other cool, other cool builds that debuted was Alex Holovnia. He is from the Ukraine. Hopefully, I pronounced that right. You, and he Ukraine. drives, a, and he drives a VR38 DETT swapped A90 Supra. Most of that doesn't make sense to you, so I what? will put yeah, it in, in English? English terms. He drives a Mark V Supra, so the new body style of Supra, which is a Toyota product. No, I got that part. You simplified the easiest part. But it has the twin turbo V6 out of an R35 GTR, which is a Nissan product. Ben's like, I know this is hard to understand, folks. 
So let me translate it. You know the A90, as in not all of the other ones? Yeah, that's a Supra. And it's like, oh, thanks. I know exactly well, what the VR30 ADETT is. Yeah. Well, for my friends that listen to the show that aren't import people and wouldn't know what an A90 was, I explained. But so he has a GTR swap super, which is super cool. And he didn't do super well, but it's his first FD event, so we'll let it slide. And it's a and then BMW, so. And then Taylor Hull is, is uh, campaigning his C6 Corvettes for the second season in a row, and it now oh. has a fantastic and it's, American flag livery. I was going to say um, the best colors. So it's fantastic. He debuted that livery this weekend. Um, I've got a horrible picture in our notes. I'll try to get a better one for when Please. I upload this. I'll, like, steal it from his Instagram or something. All credits go to Taylor Hull. Um our Your podium is also advised us to say that we're not actually stealing. We're, we're not actually stealing anything. We are borrowing all credits to original owners. Um, your podium is as follows. Matt Field, who had a crazy wild weekend, his car got crashed. And how things work in FD is if you crash and it is the other driver's fault, you get 10 minutes. And then you also have a five-minute competition timeout that you get to use once throughout the entire event. He used all 15 minutes. They took the entire front end off the car, fenders, bumpers, headlights, everything, swapped the intercooler and a couple other things, threw it back together. And the rule is you have to start the car and drive off before the timer ends. And there is the broadcasting was fantastic. The clock counts down three, two, and he drives away. So well wow. done to Matt Field and his team in that triple uh, seven Borla exhaust C6 Corvette Rome Charpentier or Charpentier if you're French um, came second in the number 171 garageistic BMW E36. Homeboy's and... name is Rome. Yeah, Rome. Uh, dude, if you saw the list of names in here, that is a very normal name. I just wanted to say when in Rome, and then I thought. <laughs> <laughs> my lawyer has advised me nothing about this. I don't know what to do. <laughs> my lawyer has said we are in the wild west of what's the <laughs> You're on your own, kid. <laughs> um, and then P3 was Frederick Osbo in the number 151 uh, Rockstar Energy Toyota Supra. Uh, James Dean finished sixth, which is incredible for the, his first time ever driving the Mustang in competition and being back in FD after three years. Chelsea Denofa, his RTR teammate, finished seventh. And Adam in, LZ died. And Adam LZ did not die, but he did finish dead last in 30th because in top 32, which is the start of the bracket system, he went against Chelsea Denofa, who is his teammate, and he did... Um, he did get knocked out by Chelsea Denofa, but Adam LZ qualified last, therefore he finished last. It's actually very complicated how it all breaks oh, down in the it end. Is. Um, it's very annoying. Yeah, I think every, I think me and the rest of the listeners were, honestly, I think we were on the same page, but now we're lost. Right, and just some other uh, some other notable drivers. Ryan Turk finished 5th, Chris Forsberg finished 17th, and Dylan Hughes finished 21st. Nick Patty, that is all I have for episode 48. That's all I have. That's all, folks. Um, <laughs> yibbity, yibbity, that's all, folks. It's pretty much. Um, so let's see. We had Bristol Dirt. We have na more NASCAR coming next weekend. We have British Superbike not coming for two weekends. We have IMSA at Long Beach. We have WEC at Portimao. We have so much. The 963 is going to get its win. And then if it does, after MotoGP, I am going on a legally responsible <laughs> joyride in my Porsche. Out under the speed limit. <laughs> I will make sure to do 10% a, a under spirit, the posted A spirited speed slow speed drive. <laughs> a spirited uh, first gear cruise in my Porsche. Well, I'm make sure to stay happen. tuned. Make sure to stay tuned for all of that. If the 963 wins or if it doesn't, we'll make sure to report on it right here on the Clutch Dump. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for listening. Whatever audio platform you're listening to this on, make sure you give us a follow, leave a rating, and a review. It helps us very much. If you're on the YouTubes, make sure you subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like, and share this video. Comment down below what you think of Nick's Volkswagen Beetle. Um, and that is all <laughs> for episode 48 of the Clutch Dump. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, so much for watching. We'll see you next time.